Gold Format really is a blast from the past. Welcome back to GGP Halle an der Saale. We are in round three. We are 96 players today playing seven rounds of Swiss and we have another blast from the past at our table because we have Christian Böttcher who is a real old school player. He played way longer than I did and top German nationals back in the day and Shonen Jumps, they were called Shonen Jumps, not YCS in, in, in the day. So he's a very experienced player, never touched a card online I believe, so um, he probably is not known for you online guys, but uh, at the Germany tournament circuit he is really really known so i'm excited to see him and i believe they are starting shortly so just that let's switch up to the table simon what are you expecting in this round three match so uh we haven't seen our most represented deck which is chaos turbo uh so um i hope we'll see one of these uh because like it's the most prominent deck and we haven't seen it um, but you said uh, that uh, Christian is more of a, a Back in the day, Slower Christian player like not the combo, not the combo guy. Back in the day, Christian loved to play stun decks. So I assume he's like on kind of a beatdown strategy. Let's see. I don't know anything about Yakmo. Both players are two zero, so they had a great start uh, to the day already. Um, both players know what they're doing, and uh, I agree. We don't uh, saw Chaos, Chaos Turbo yet, but we will see it plenty later today. So I'm, I, I don't mind if you don't see it. Yeah. No. Uh, other decks we haven't seen. Mm till now are like uh, the panda strategy yeah, but is uh, also not uh, not there yet <laughs> we only have two panda burns in in the tournament so Ooh. it's uh, we have three burns total one is a stall burn and two are panda burns um, oh, yeah. Christian proving me wrong uh, I was assuming he maybe plays um, in a stun deck but he sets a monster and we see Nobleman by Jak Moore. Christian is contemplating a response. What possible response could you have here? Maybe a jar? Magic Jammer. Oh, we see the held shoot. And we see control on Jak Moore's side. Uh, what do we have here? Tsukuyomi, Morphing Jar, Double Goats, and Torrential. Do you like that hand in Jak Moore's? Um, I think uh, it lacks a little bit of aggression. Like you got your Nobleman, but you have like no follow up. and. That's not a hand where you want to set Morphing Jar immediately. So, um, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the hand, but it's not bad by any means. Like, uh, Torrential, when you don't know it's there, is very good. <laughs> torrential, if you know it's there, <laughs> maybe just trades one for one. Um, it also depends a lot on the matchup we have here. Like, uh, if Yagmo would play against an Aqua deck right now, Double Goats would be amazing. Yes. If it's like a slower strategy, like Control or Turbo, it may be not as good. But let's see what uh, Christian elects to shuffle back here. Uh, so, I assume Christian has um, a flip monster face down. So, yeah. uh, he change shoot uh, to have the possibility to yeah it's a deco like shuffle yeah. deco back banish, banish them all for good and Yakmo is not playing deco so Yakmo should be on a classic control strategy yeah it looks like um, it looks uh, it looks like it uh, but um, uh, yeah deco Ichi is also a card that's not uh, uh, that isn't in all of the control decks like it's it, it's the dark flip draw one that's uh, exchangeable with the dark mimic yeah some plays some not and christian seems to be on chaos too here so, so maybe you get your wish see your yeah. first turbo today like uh turbo is a great deck and yeah. uh, all the flip monsters in the world are so seen here today <laughs> to help our operator i think he can put chaos turbo to uh, uh, above christian's name it's pretty safe to assume that he plays that and uh, Yakmo is playing some time of control, maybe chaos, maybe god. So um, dust shoot, and it's a control mirror. There yeah. is a meta. Yeah, that looks like chaos control on Christian's side then. Yeah, and uh, there is now a bit of a debate. Like Christian sh shot the monster real quick and does not want to show the rest of his hand, but he has to, so that Yakmo can at least identify all cards. But I think our judge will clear that up real quick, and we see nobleman uh, meta and creature yeah. swap. And there. no taking is allowed, if I am correct, right? No taking is absolutely allowed, like it was back in the day. It is also in this gold compris. So better write down the cards you see with shoot. Christian did the same. Yes. Okay, so we have a control mirror. This is, could be a very slow matchup, but also it's probably the most skilled matchup you can have in this format. 
Yeah, uh, it's like the gold uh, decks you played like back in 2015, 16, where everyone just brought the same gold list uh, to every tournament and you just played for the fun of it between rounds. Uh, this is kind of how, this was the inception of the modern god format, was yes. like people uh, getting tired of advance and just brought some gold decks which were very cheap back then to tournaments to play in between rounds and it were usually just was control mirrors. Yes. Okay, so um, Yakmur passes, like we saw two passes there I think, so a lot pass back here. Um, yeah, and just another pass back, this is the... I think control another pass back. I think control is the most difficult deck to play because it's um, a very slow deck, but you also need to time your aggression pretty well. Um, what would you say? What, what is, in your opinion, important as a control mirror? Um, I'm always the most afraid to um, lose my um, monsters that are able to hit, mm. um, like my warrior lady, my blade knight, my um, breaker my tribe because you have so few of these monsters that are actually able to uh, deal damage and um, if you lose them too early to the back row of the opponent um, you are in a very bad spot later on and uh, that's why I think that's the most important part is to preserve your like good attacking monsters. That's uh, why uh, losing Dequichi so early is uh, also a, a very huge hit to Christian because uh, 1400 is like the best stat you can have on a flip summon monster. Yeah, so uh, Thunder Dragon in Christian's head confirms that Christian is on a chaos control strategy here, which is uh, getting more and more popular lately than the gold control because it gives you options to play multiple copies of Chaos Sorcerer, which is ultimately just a bit more gas than a conventional gold control has. Yes. And uh, these uh, Chaos Sorcerer are in fact also a good attacking monster that you can just throw in without losing precious normal summon monsters. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, 2300 are also uh, yeah a very uh, very big stat line that you cannot easy check so we, we we have a lot of time to yap here because not much is happening but uh, that's the exciting thing in, in gold control mirrors there's like not much happening until everything is happening because uh, if both players have as many resources as they have and we see Christian discarding a certain for uh, end of turn here because of hand limit uh, then they're very uh, explosive plays are possible and no player hiding behind tear right now which is usually the, the, the most stall factor and Christian now with eight cards in hand so many many options yeah oh. um, and uh, l like uh, they are all waiting for the one card that breaks the opponent's stalemate no one wants to commit into the back row of the other it's, it's kind of a game of reverse chicken right now no one wants to do anything and every, uh, both players are waiting for the other one to act first so that they can react to it yeah as soon as you pull the trigger you uh, might be in trouble yourself and yeah. there is now uh, <laughs> the next set monster uh, from Yagmur which might now be a flip monster because uh, one of the noblemans already was used. Yeah, one Christian. nobleman is gone. Um, and now there is a magician of faith that could get the nobleman back and uh, there he was lured in a false sense of security. Do we hit a, a real flip now is the question, which would be amazing. I would assume now it's the time that you set your real flip after you used your uh, Tsukuyomi to bait out one of the noblemans, uh, that's usually the point where you set your flip monster mm -hmm. to get, uh, and we knew about the morphing jar. It was so. the morphing jar, like we forgot, but Christian certainly did not. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was the calculated morphing jar hit. Uh, we don't see Christian access in his deck, so he is, he is not playing morphing jar. Uh, interesting, because it doesn't make any sense, and we yeah. see mighty attacks going in, 600 yeah. damage. How do you recover from that? Uh, yeah, that's a spot where um, you can actually attack because these monsters are too weak to actually um, be a threat for any back row. Like, you do not want to book your opponent's <laughs> Magician of Faith and uh, using a Mirror Force for a monster that just comes back from the grave the next turn is also not uh, the best way to save, like, 300 life points. 
Yeah, so Yakmo is now on like a 20 turn clock, which is kind of scary if you're Yakmo. <laughs> yeah, like uh, they passed already like uh, five turns each, so uh, <laughs> if that would have happened earlier, <laughs> the clock would have advanced much more. And this is why I think uh, this matchup is like the most skill based in Hall of Goldschmidt, because both players have infinite resources now, and the game is not decided by uh, who draws like his stronger cards earlier, it's like who. Uh, who grinds better with his resources? Who who uses them more effectively? Yeah, and now that there are so many uh, like back row cards, uh, the heavy storm is more unlikely to come. Now they have are like in a uh, in the situation where they have to look out for uh, how do I respond with my back row to the opponent's back row. Yeah. Here's also some speculation going in because Yakmo was thinking a bit on Christian's nobleman, so there is the assumption that he maybe has a solemn face down. Yeah. Uh, because playing Solemn is uh, kind of common nowadays in gold control, so oh. it um, very well might be. We see a meta, this is the first metamorphosis of the tournament, no not the tournament, but uh, this match for us. Yes. And it's countered by a ring of destruction, getting rid of it, but uh, yeah, no, the monster is not going to go away. This. Um, it's an interesting ruling, in fact, so I can uh, talk about a bit about that. Because back in the day, and I think Christian played back in the day, so this yes. is why he, in Europe it was ruled that in, uh, if you target a set monster and then in resolve, your Thousand Eyes gets destroyed. So we have a Headshot appeal, I think. Headshot, so Ring of Rings. Hmm? Yeah, I meant the Headshot, so it's okay. Um, I don't know if you want to Headshot. Yeah, but I can't do it. Okay. Um, yeah, we have, a, we have a Headshot call. Yeah. I'm going to get it. <coughs> Exactly, so uh, the American ruling for this should be that um, the monster uh, fails to equip uh, the set card uh, so that it uh, should stay on the field because it can't be equipped and uh, the old European ruling was that uh, the card will in fact be equipped and then goes to the grave because it can't be equipped. Um, and now is the uh, discussion uh, like they had a head judge uh, ruling earlier today, I assume, that's why uh, we are in this situation now, and um, yeah, so uh, I, um, yeah, we'll have to check uh, how that gets resolved, um, and I think uh, we will go uh, into the pause screen uh, until uh, we get this situation resolved, and I'll inform you uh, after what uh, the uh, yeah, uh, what was happening there. Yeah. So, and now we are back. Uh, the situation has been resolved, and uh, yeah, it was like I said before uh, the Thousand Eyes Restrict got uh, sent to the graveyard. Stays on board. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's on actually, the board. If you look in the chat, it's uh, Minus Müller uh, also posted something there, which is the correct ruling. So, uh, yeah, we are playing it the way that um, if a thousand eyes targets a monster and is destroyed in the resolve the monster stays and we see a spell shield type 8 being sniped and now we know why Yagmo um, was thinking on nobleman yes because now, uh, he could have negated it but he decided not to now we are in the picture maybe he won didn't want to activate his morphing charm. <laughs> um, Shout out to our judge team here who just did an excellent job to uh, yeah, to solve this whole situation, which is not an easy task, especially like uh, players are committed, uh, players are um, yeah, uh, passionate. And uh, yeah, we have some uh, deck yeah. types now. Uh, this is not a big deal. We have yeah. like double card control on board, one is the chaos control, but it's not 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 that big of a deal. Like the difference between these decks is uh, is really really small. Yeah, so it, they could be goat, uh, goats. Yeah. That are the difference, but uh, both are on control basically. Yeah. So this is what uh, is important here. Exactly. Um, now we still have. Uh, uh, oh no, uh, we got a breaker. I. Uh, that sniped the yeah. Uh, I was a little bit out of uh, out of it for a second. Uh, yeah, we need to get back into the game set because it was uh, complicated enough already, and now we got interrupted yeah. and completely uh, soaked out of it. But we are back in there, and there's a Kaiku. This is the very first aggressive play Yakmo did make all game. Yes, uh, and uh, Breaker did use his uh, his token, uh, so. Um, 
we in fact have a strong Kaiku on board. Yeah, but strong Kaiku wants to get rid of Magician, but it's not allowed to. There's a Mirror yeah. Force which is allowed to connect and Kaiku hits the graveyard. And uh, using the Mirror Force here is uh, good for two reasons. Uh, you can recycle your Magician of Faith if you got a Tsukuyomi on Christian's part. And uh, you also get your potential Chaos Monsters life again. Because uh, for those who are not aware, Kaiku has sort of a floodgate effect that prevents you from banishing cards from the graveyard. So all the possible big monsters we were talking about that the chaos control strategy uh, likes uh, are not live if there is the scary monk on field. Yeah. Um, I got a question here, how is Alimoto? I don't know how he is, but he's definitely not here right now. He's uh, not playing. Uh, Alimuto, of course, the second place of GGP Osnabrück, uh, is not attending uh, exactly like the winner of GGP Osnabrück, Svenny Boy, also not attending today, otherwise he would have had, would have had featured him already. In fact, we have uh, this is the fourth Gold Group Prix we ever held in Germany, and all three previous winners are not here today, so we will have a new German GGP winner. And uh, that's exciting. <laughs> uh, Equally as exciting as uh, these monsters from Christian staring down Yakmo's back row. And um, we are now really checking uh, all possibilities because maybe Christian is now ready to push. Uh, this intense resource checking hasn't been. Oh no, he's just attacking. Um, so he just. Uh, fast forwards his clock and maybe we don't need a big push maybe these little pushes are just enough yeah just enough and the game is still going on so i have time to answer some questions because milos is asking where we can track upcoming ggps in europe you can always look at godformat.com where there are all ggps announced we have one more ggp in germany coming up the 7th of september in munich and we also have um, a gold compre in cardiff left and uh, in uh, Milan also one in September I believe but take a look there and there's Tsukuyomi um, the second one because one is already banished yes one is banished uh, the second one and Tsukuyomi also a great card uh, because um, the hundred more attack points than uh, uh, most of the common uh, and yeah be, I elaborate further on Tsukuyomi after uh, this creature swap gets resolved I, I because know. creature swap is uh, a very good card if you give your opponent a spirit monster because it gets back to your hand in the end phase yeah. not the opponent's uh, yeah but uh, what i wanted to say is like uh, tsukiyomi has 1100 attack and uh, all the staple good stuff monsters that are in um uh like which are present in golf formats like Blade Knight, like Kaiko, they have less than 1-1 one, one depth. Yeah. But let's uh, point out that play here because it was really interesting. Creature swapping a Tsukuyomi for a Magician would have been an excellent play for Yakmo because yes. Tsukuyomi would have been returned to his hand. And, and then, then he, he could have locked. He could have uh, <laughs> recycled Christian's um, Magician against him. But Christian changed scapegoats so he was able to trade in uh, a scapegoat token instead of his magician which is a way better trade for him so very smart use of goats here and now we go into the end phase and Tsukuyomi goes back to Yakmo's hand and Christian once again has the opportunity to do something and I really like three scapegoat tokens I like them better than four because um, now his field is not clocked and he can actually continue playing because he has one monster zone left. Yeah, and imagine Christian uh, would would have a Tsukuyomi of his own now, which would have been would be devastating. It's just a servant. We are continuing to pushing a bit damage here, running over sheep tokens and dealing some small bites out of Yakmo's life. Torrential is very interesting here because you're basically just torrentialing, uh, removing the magician and yes. tokens. And I mean, getting rid of the tokens is like a very good thing because now both players are not on four back row cards anymore uh, and just have one. And playing through one or two back rows uh, makes cards like Heavy Storm even better. But we are not seeing these cards. Yeah, uh, we see another part of the They are not real. And now I think uh, Christian has the matchup advantage because uh, both players burn through a lot of resources, and Christian playing the Chaos Control variation still has um, potentially three, maybe two Chaos Monsters left, while Yakmo only has one. So there's a bit more pressure Christian can uh, apply. But. Uh, 
Yeah, and also I think Christian has a significant card advantage at the moment. There's break with the just added servant. I presume in the standby phase. And then we see chain scapegoats by Yagmur. Um, ah, okay, we see the tree born frog tokens. I have love here because Yagmur asked me earlier, or me and the judges when we were signing decklist, if he was able to uh, use these um, tree born frogs as tokens. And we said yes, but you have to mark them as tokens. What he did. But uh, we have to say that Treebound Frog uh, is uh, like, how many months is it till Treebound Frog would have come out in GOAT format? I don't know, to be honest. It's like uh, two or three months till Treebound Frog would have been legal. It's like two sets after uh, the end of GOAT format. Uh, is Treebound Frog, and Treebound Frog is such an such a cool card that had nothing to do with gold format. So. Yeah, it's like this is why I don't know much about it because I'm really deep into gold format and not uh, really deep into other formats, at least uh, currently. So, um, yeah, okay. Yakmo still has a set monster which we don't, don't know anything about. Christian already used his normal summon this turn, so there will probably be just a pass back. I doubt that he that you want to commit a BLS now. Uh, maybe you Maybe you want to. But uh, I think Christian is contemplating another card, which I'm curious about why he is contemplating it. But uh, let's not spoil it too much. Uh, we see a bit of intense graveyard checking here. And we had, well, this is such a long game one. We all already had Judge Call. Players got extra time for that. But we have to consider that timeout very, very, very might not. And there's the Pot of Greed. Why do you think, did he think about Pot of Greed here? I mean, he has a lot of cards in hand. and. Um, my problem with gold control, and maybe his problem with gold control as well, is that all of your cards are so good. Like, you have no bad cards in this deck, so getting rid of uh, cards Ooh. from your hand is uh, very difficult, and he has, like, maximum hand size, and if he draws one more, he has to discard two cards and not just the Serpent. But he found uh, his second Nobleman, and both players played Spice and Jagmur actually on triple Spy. This is difficult to find space in your deck for triple Spy. And um, Tizo is pointing out in chat that he thinks that he, uh, shout out to Tizo by the way, uh, this is my captain in Warwick, uh, th that he hold, held it for a few turns. So maybe just because he thought like he couldn't commit any cards. Yes. So if you just put a beat now, you need to discard for Henders Limit or commit into the field, which, which he didn't want to do. And also something which uh, was pointed uh, out to me in the chat is that both players are Berlin regulars. Oh, so they maybe know each other. That's funny. This could be another factor that they maybe know each other probably quite well and, and know what to expect against each other. So Berlin regular means they go to the same place that holds gold locals or are there different places that host gold locals because Berlin is kind of a big city so with let's multiple sort of, locals? I don't know but oh this is I was yeah, wondering that's why game. no it's not game. It's it's not no, game no. it's uh, not much but uh, maybe Christian can find it because I was curious Ooh, there he got oh. rid of a BLS on and a mirror well. force. This was an excellent card of I think the game is swinging in Christian's favor. I was, um, yeah, I was curious why he committed that BLS that early, but Azura explains that main deck Azura, please, is a good meta call today because we have a lot of control here. And um, now we got the grace. Uh, and I have the confirmation to your question. Uh, Yami Darius said they are playing against each other since, since over three years. Yeah, that's that's hype. <laughs> they go uh, both go to Heaven's Door Goat Locals. So yeah, we have two regulars from the same local playing each other. They probably drove here together. So this is <laughs> crazy that they get to play against here at such a big uh, stage. Probably not what they wanted to, but uh, yeah. That, that's a random door, it happens sometimes. So, uh, Christian Grace is here because he's trying to find a Chaos Rock. So right. Yeah, As soon course. as he finds Chaos Rock, he has game. Ring is another card which is just instantly game here for him because we have 3k damage on bot already, as well we'll be able to take over all goals at once. And so, another big monster to clear. But wait a second, are they still in the same turn in which uh, Torrential was used? Um... Because then he just double normal summoned. I'm not sure about that. Ooh, there are so many turn skips. Uh, maybe yeah. someone in chat noticed that I um, uh, I didn't. <laughs> so like he, he summoned Serpent, then he got Torrential, and then he potted, but was it another turn? Like, uh, I think it was another turn because there were scapegoats in between. Uh, yes, yeah, scapegoats, scapegoats were chained were... to what again? I'm not quite sure. But uh, 
there was a set spy and into nobleman. Yeah, so yeah but, but there, there was another turn. There between. was a result yeah. of. Pot I. Yeah, you're completely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, you're there right. There were right. turns between. Yeah, you were turns between. I, uh, I'm tripping. It's too much god control action here. I can't follow it. There are too too many goats to be controlled. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, we get rid of our magician of faith with the graceful charity yeah. to possibly get another light monster in grave. But there is uh, just big damage happening, Yagmo now on 2200 life points. There should be plenty light in uh, Christian's Grave because he has a uh, Thunder Dragon dropped and probably oh, discarded yeah. by, by um, Grace or something. So now... In phase 2 duo. Oh, this is so many cards. Christian went through everything to get what he needed. Did he worry? Did he worry a lady is an out to every single card in the game. <laughs> yeah. I firmly believe that. Another magician getting dropped. So ring is basically just game here, but yeah. uh, let's see if Christian found it. Uh, there's a heavy storm. Do we see the ring? No, it's uh, a creature swap. So Yakmo's still in it, and now has to mount a comeback. I believe snatch is still um, not being used. And do we really see? All Yakmo is also on Azura, and this is so much damage on board. This is 4,000 damage already on board. Do, do they maybe play the same list? I was wondering, like, uh, maybe similar list. There's a dust shoot getting rid of, there's a snatch. Okay, a lot is happening here. Um, but snatch still seals the deal. Snatch still seals the deal. Christian wins game number one. If you didn't follow what happened there, it's like Yakmo dealed a lot of damage to Christian, was in a commanding position sitting on the BLS he stole, and then he shooted in the draw phase and saw that Christian held held Snatch Steel in hand, which is just you take the BLS attack for a game. Yes, and uh, Snatch Steel such a good card um, for exactly these situations. Yeah. Um, it's a game closer, it can get you back out of very desperate situations. Um, and here we saw it as uh, the closing argument after revealing your hand with the dust shot. It's like, yeah, I've won. <laughs> and I really, really liked this game one. It was, it was long. And it was maybe a bit confusing to us because we weren't in the zone like the players. But I really think that Christian won it because he used his resources better. Like he, he had more power cards, sure, but he also um, waited for the exact uh, right moment to use his cards the way he did. And very well played by him. He showed while he is uh, a veteran player and a master player at that. Yes. And uh, now that we. Uh know that they are from the same local and they both play like Azura, Priest and yeah. Creature Swap and stuff like that. I think they have a, simi uh, a similar idea to their control strategies and um, yeah, so let's see if they have a similar idea while siding. <laughs> yeah, and they, they probably like, they're both playing control, they're both going to the same local, so they probably discussed um, what they um, would expect and maybe they both expected a lot of control today and this is because they went with Azura. And they weren't wrong, because if you look at the break, uh, deck breakdown, Control is actually the um, second most played deck today. Um, with Control, like I combined Chaos and Goat Control, because uh, yeah, like listing them separately would have been uh, kind of mess. And we have uh, yeah, 15 people today are playing Goat Control. Um, to, as a reminder, 27 are on Chaos Twitter today, so yeah. a lot, a lot more. But uh, yeah, 15. Is a lot more than the third most played deck, which are Warrior and Reasoning Gate, with nine copies each. Thank you, Svenny Boy, for that. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, winning the last uh, Grand Prix with uh, Reasoning Gate uh, definitely put that deck more on the map. But maybe people have now more cards in the side deck against uh, the Reasoning Gate. Reasoning Gate is a big factor. I wouldn't wonder if uh, we will feature one eventually today. Let's see how well they fare. Um, yeah, looking at the meta breakdown, which is most surprising for me, is that there, there are only nine warriors. And there are, in fact, seven Earth Beats. So almost as many Earth Beatdown or Earth Aggro decks than Warriors. So people are uh, kind of switching to other strategies. Yeah, I think um, the Earth uh, Aggro strategy is not that vulnerable to, um, like, uh, cards like Skill Drain, maybe. And we also saw that uh, we have possibly <laughs> <laughs> Five zombie decks with skill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't so. think they all play skill, but yeah. Yeah, but I think uh, like uh, these kind of decks are very good against the control decks as well. So yeah. um, uh, seeing decks that fare well into control decks. Yeah, but 
I don't think Earth Argo is that much better against Control. I, I just think that, uh, like, Warrior was the one option for players to play instead of Chaos Turbo. Yes. And um, with the format getting more popularity, more ideas are getting tossed out there, and more deck lists are getting published every day. So people finding alternatives to Warrior, which also are alternatives to Chaos Turbo. So, um, like, when one or two years ago people thought, okay, I either have to play like Turbo or Control or I have to play Warrior, they are now like, no, if I don't want to play Turbo Control, I can play Earthbeat, I can play Reasoning Gate, I can play Earth Aggro, I can play Burn maybe, because they are all uh, other uh, opportunities to counter the best deck of the format. Yes. Um, which uh, only is featured twice in this tournament. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, of Krish Control, obviously. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I assume we are uh, going yeah. into the second game. Yeah, we they can switch just, back to the uh, table. They are shuffling up, and we do see a uh, game two. Now they, like, I didn't uh, look at my clock to be honest, but I think they. This it can't be that much time left until um, until timeout is potentially effective here. So um, in setting, you have to take that also in account because. Um, there are no draws in God format. So if Yakmo wins game two, or game two ends in timeout and Yakmo is more live, then we will have to play a game three in timeout, but there will be no siding between games two and three then in timeout. So maybe you have to um, yeah, think about that already. I don't know if both players think that far ahead, though, if they are, um, have the time inside. But uh, as experienced as they are in, in, life, in real life gold, because if they play in the, at the same local for over three years, they have a lot of experience with timeout rules. Um, it's probably in, in inside of their um, minds. Okay. So what are cards that uh, we possibly bought out of that are not that good in the timeout? I mean, I don't think they are on cards like Upstart Goblin. We don't know. Maybe they are. But uh, yeah, Sangan is the normal sum of choice for Yakmo. Then we see just a pass play. And Didi Warrior Lady is what again? Uh, Didi Warrior Lady is the out to everything. Yes. <laughs> and Sangan is part of everything, apparently. Uh, and we... This is an interesting side deck choice. Christian side decking into Sakuritsu armor for the control mirror and getting punished for that because Breaker snipes it away and just uh, attacks anyway. Yes, Breaker is very good into battle traps. Yeah, and battle traps are, in my opinion, not that good of a choice in the mirror, but maybe Christian has another idea with it. And Deku Ichi is getting sniped. They're definitely uh, not on the same list yeah. because Christian is playing Deku and Yakmo isn't. Yeah, uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> I noticed that one as well. Uh, <laughs> as I was um, <laughs> saying that earlier, because uh, the exact same play happened in game one. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, true, true. But, uh, uh, yeah, Nobleman stays one of the best uh, uh, monsters. Uh, this monster is a rules. lot of early pressure here for Yakmo. Azura is such a good card in that spot because the face one could very well be goats and you can't uh, activate goats here because they just will all go all away. It's a lot of damage Yakmo can deal early, so maybe he's able to finish it up way before timeout is a factor. Yeah, just uh, win game two very fast, so you can board for game There's three. There's a shoot and we see a completely dead hand for Christian besides that Grace, which could get him back. So obvious choice here, you, you need to shuffle back that BLS. Yeah, uh, I think shuffling back the BLS is... Uh, the smart choice because um, you for one get uh, the better monster card away <laughs> uh, but also uh, the BLS got his light attribute so if you maybe want to uh, uh, use card destruction later after your graceful draw yeah. uh, you with the Thunder Dragons and the Magician of Faith are more likely to draw into light monsters um, I don't know. I, I, definitely you need to, to shuffle back yeah. BLS because it's a way bigger threat. And uh, now we see Grace getting rid of a Typhoon, which uh, can't do anything right now. Let's see, is, does Christian decide to discard card destruction or Chaos Rock, or does he discard another uh, new drawn card? It's interesting how quick he decided that he not needs uh, Typhoon here. Yeah, I mean, there is no immediate back row. Hmm that needs to be spot removed uh, and uh, the back row cards might be 
I mean, maybe Christian knows Yakmore isn't playing the battle traps. Yeah, probably. So, um, Breaker just attacking here for 1 6. Yakmore does not want to go for a potential game shot here, which he could have done with the right hand. And Christian decided to discard card destruction, so we know he is left with a dead sock in hand, and there is neither a light nor a dark in Christian's graveyard. He's uh, really like, yeah, in modern view, it's like he bricked a bit. There's not much he can do. Yeah, we. Uh are not in the position to uh, yeah, preserve any more cards. We need to use the Mirror Force now and not going for the game shot with Azura is also playing around the Torrential Tribute. Yeah, and the Mirror Force, and this was a wise decision because Mirror Force was used for Breaker here and Yakmo had successfully baited a normal man and uh, lost his Azura which would have could have gone for a game shot here but now uh, if a potential flip is obviously more valuable here. Imagine like flipping a spy or a deco, the deco is not there, but there's the Azura of Christian, a lot of Azuras are getting thrown out. Second nobleman getting rid of Magician. And uh, Magician, of course, uh, the prime light target for every deck. You don't want to lose your Magicians. It's very versatile and uh, yeah, losing all of the Magicians in this game. Two on the side of Christian and three on the side of uh, Yakmo. Yakmo on triple magician. This is not usually the ratio you play, but uh, I get it in control. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if all your games are 90 turn plus games, yeah. uh, getting the good cards more often yeah. is more better. Azura <laughs> attacking into Mirror Force and now Yakmo potentially one attack away from winning here. This is not big enough of an attack. This is only a certain. But it's putting Christian on the clock. This is one fifth of Christian's life points. There's not much yeah. left. And with the Azura Priester meeting the Mirror Force, we got our light monster in the graveyard. Yeah, you are correct. Very good pickup here from, from you. And this is game on board. Spy getting normal sum. Do we see goats, which would probably conserve so certain to death here, just but Mirror Force already is gone, so I don't know why. And uh, there's a Rikiki break. And now you get rid of Snatch Steel here. Interesting. He could have discarded Chaos Rock, which would have given him a guaranteed dark, but maybe he he'd, he needs to draw dark now. This is basically his. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a draw the draw the dark show now. Yes. Uh, Nobleman from Yakmo. Was this is a dark? A noble... It was a Tsukuyomi. It was a dark. This That's could have saved Christian. Unfortunate. And Kaiko goes for game. Very quick game two here for Yakmo, and we will have a game three before timeout. Exciting stuff. Yeah, that's definitely uh, that's definitely exciting. Uh, especially uh, the Kaiku is um, a very good monster regardless uh, of the situation. Uh, that was the nail in the coffin yeah. uh, in that game two because the Chaos Author in hand or the potential BLS yeah. uh, would. Uh, wouldn't have mattered at that point. And this is, I think, um, how uh, how it comes in play that they know each other that well as they apparently do. Because probably Christian anticipated that Yakmo would sideboard into Kaikus, and this is the reason why he bought Zakuritsu armors. Yeah. Because yeah. It, that that is, is a weird it's a way to deal with Kaikus if you're playing Chaos Control. So uh, you see, like deep knowledge about players' behavior, setting behavior is. It's such an important factor, even in a big tournament like this. Yes, um, I mean, uh, if you can, uh, uh, if you can, like, guess what the strategy of your opponent is, uh, you may have the read. But if you know your opponent, mm. that's uh, also a big factor. And if you played for decades now, mm. uh, <laughs> uh, you uh, maybe uh, are in a very good spot uh, mm. to like know everyone yeah. like you know your friends uh, one thing uh, i don't know if our operator can hear us we don't have on screen is that it's one one in games right now we don't have it in, in the overlay right now i just recognize it's not that big of a deal okay <laughs> we, we will get that fixed um maybe if not this round maybe next round yeah maybe you can get rid of the two wins you lost then because like we yeah, it's not that important that's, again that's not how it works but um <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not a technical expert, I'm just a guy <laughs> pretending to know something about the cards being slapped on the table. Yeah, and uh, cards were slapped on the table. Uh, they were slapped hard. But, uh, <laughs> like, um, there were no uh, immediate chaos threats in the second game that were, like, uh, slapped on the table. And I think uh, slapping the boss monster on the board is uh, the best way to do that. Yeah. Uh, 
we slapping. Have, <laughs> we have uh, one appearing on the table, so shout out again to our operator, who uh, which name yeah. just huh? helped me with his name. I'm not the name guy, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jens, help us. Uh, our operator's name. Felix, yes, thank you. Felix is doing an excellent job, so shout outs to him. Uh, we are so, uh, we, we talk too much, we forget easy names of people who are sitting like two minutes yeah. in front of us. I, I mean, if, uh, if the name uh, names are not on the screen, yeah, I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm no use when it comes to names. Um, we have a question in chat, if um, someone plays a Reasoning Gate, yes, we have nine Reasoning Gate players today. We have not seen one thus far, but I'm sure we will have one on, stre on stream eventually. Yeah, I spoke with one Reasoning Gate player between rounds two and three, and uh, he lost his first round. So uh, we have uh, eight Reasoning Gate players left in contention <laughs> <laughs> for the first place. But uh, To be fair, he's still in contention, because yeah. with X1 you'd certainly top. So yeah. one loss is not the end of the world That's by right. any means. all we do yeah and uh, we are uh, looking back uh, there is a little bit of shuffling and a little bit of thinking going on so Yakmo already decided this is this is my 40 cards I'm confident with it I can beat Christian with it in game 3 and Christian is still contemplating if he maybe adjust maybe that's a correct armor or something you want to adjust because it didn't work out and now Yakmo saw it so the surprise factor maybe is gone yeah but I mean uh, the Sakuretsu armor still is good, like uh, you can't win if you can't attack. So uh, if you have to attack into the, the Sakuretsu armor, maybe it um, yeah, uh, makes the Heavy Storm and the Mystical Space Typhoon even more valuable if you have the spec rock I mean Sakuretsu armor is definitely a good cut in the format, but it uh, all depends on matchup and also on how players play. Um, but we do uh, actually saw that attacking uh, got more important into game 2 than it was in game 1 because uh, pressure with Azura Priest, with Kaiku um, did play a huge factor there and um, also Azura Priest is also a card uh, against which Sako is um, useful and now Christian decided, yep, yeah, I'm confident and now Yakmo is doubting himself it's like, uh, maybe I should change one more card this, this card could make a difference so it's fair um, <clears throat> to set again the stage we are here at Gold Prix Halle an der Sada. We are 96 players, which, and we, we didn't point that out, which makes it the biggest Gold Prix we've ever had in Germany. This is the biggest Gold Prix we've ever had in Germany, almost 100 players. This also means we have free invites for the Gold Format World Championship. And there's some discussion going on, but I guess it's solved. Um, yeah, so a lot at stake here. We are playing seven rounds of Swift, cut to top eight, and three out of the top players will be able to earn the invite to the Gold World Championship, which is exciting. Yes, definitely. Um, it's tingling in my finger to uh, also flip some goat <laughs> scapegoats, uh, but uh, yeah. Um, I'm not able to do that. I'm just here to look at two people who are very good at flipping scapegoats. Um, <laughs> obviously I, I would have liked a lot to play because I love playing the format and I was a bit sad yesterday that I was, wasn't able to play but otherwise uh, I was really excited and looking forward to commentate here so I'm, I'm glad that we're doing the job that we're doing and Christian is doing his job of dropping Thunder Dragon and adding two more to his deck. And now he got light monsters in his graveyard and he got uh, cards in hand for his Raigeki breaks that he played in the first and second game. Yes, we saw that a uh, Breaker card you want to play in Chaos Control, not that good in God Control. And um, after two games, it's safe to say that Yakmo probably isn't on the Chaos, Chaos variation because we didn't yeah. drop one Thunder Dragon and game one got pretty deep, so yeah. it's safe to assume. And so, do we see a Dust Shoot, which was a very important factor in both games? Uh, oh. Does not seem Okay, like we, we are, are now in timeout. Yeah, we, we talked about it a lot, and in fact, we have timeout. Timeout in God format is uh, root in a certain way. This turn will be ended, and after that, we have three more turns. After these to uh, four turns total, life points will be compared, and the player with more life points wins. If there is no winner, then we will have a sudden death, and the first player who deals damage will win 
it at that point. So no both players have to play extra carefully because every bit of damage counts. Like one attack with Servant could make the difference and could decide that this match. Exactly. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we now have our graceful charity to possibly draw into the <laughs> card that deals the damage. And uh, Spy definitely is a card that is not that good at dealing damage through monsters. So uh, we are getting rid of Spy and a Magician, and now we have Light and Dark Engrave. Yeah, and Spy is a very defensive option, but uh, I, f I think I saw the reason why uh, Yakmo dropped his Spy in his hand. Uh, so, um, yeah, we, we he has a little Spy in hand. Yeah, but uh, now there's a Mind Control, and Mind Control is a very good card, and that flips Ooh. a Spy, and we know Yakmo plays three Spies. Yes, and this is damage. This is damage on board. But he sums it in defense. He doesn't want to go for the damage. He's, uh, he wants to sit behind a Spy. Uh, I think I would have uh, tried there, but it, it's a very risky play, so I get why he didn't. Yeah, and he possibly has another play. I mean, we are still um, we still haven't normaled yet, mm -hmm. so there is the possibility to just normal the serpent and try for the 300 and sit on a 2000 defense monster. Uh, Shoutouts to Minus Miller in chat who made a very good point about mentioning Mystic Walk. Both players certainly ask by side decking about the time and if there is a Mystic Walk now in the main deck this would help a lot in the situation. Yes, uh, Mystic Walk is also a very good card against burns so it's possible to have this card in the side deck and it's not just a timeout card but also a valid card for other matchups but also very good in this matchup. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a neat thing in gold format that you can basically um, play cards just for timeout without using side deck space because you need them for burn anyway. So in the real life tournament, I also like to always bring walks, uh, even if I don't expect much burn, just because of that added timeout factor. And if you're playing gold control, you expect to go into timeout. And Christian Snow in his second turn of timeout passes and this is the very last turn of timeout for Yagmo. Yagmo, if he, if he is able to find some damage, he just won, but I think we are going into sudden death. We are going into sudden death here. This is really, really exciting, but no, we are not. In the, we are still in the end phase. There is a Typhoon sniping a Royal Decree. This could have been a huge factor against the Sakurizo armors we, see, we saw earlier from Christian. And now we are officially in sudden death. Who do you think has the edge here? I think, um, oh, that's a difficult question. Having more chaos monsters definitely helps clearing these uh, 2000 back row, and you do not want to attack and third monsters anymore. Also, Pot of Greed certainly helps. Yeah, Pot of Greed also is definitely a big help. Um, uh, cards you do not want to draw now are like your delinquent duo if he has, uh, has it still in deck, because yeah. uh, paying these 1000 life points now is your death sentence. That's correct. So um, there are possible cards that Oh, we see a Tribute Summon? Tribute Set, so this is a Funnel Ring. But why did he do this here? Because he has Metamorphosis! This gets him Reaper on the Nightmare. Reaper on the Nightmare is a level 5 who can attack directly. And that could possibly be game at this point. Because yeah. uh, Thudden Death and attacking directly are two things that do like each other. Does Yakmo have an out? We see the suggested fist bump, yeah. that's it! That's Reaper it. on the Nightmare! You rarely see it on the board, but it's important to put it in your fusion deck for exactly this scenario! Yeah, it's uh, often not there, but uh, when you need it, it's, uh, it comes and saves you in these types of situations. Very clutch victory by Christian in a possibly battle of friends. Timeout is a really difficult thing to navigate, but he saw the situation, he knew his deck inside out, he knew exactly what options he had there. And now, as usual, I leave you alone for a minute. A nice question if he wants to do an, an interview. <laughs> yeah. And um, so uh, while we get uh, to uh, know about the interview, uh, I got another Hull effect for you. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, uh, as I mentioned last round, uh, Halle is um, a city known for his uh, great musicians of the past, and uh, that's why Halle today is uh, the city in Germany that has the best cultural uh, support system for cultural heritage and stuff like that. So that's my Halle effect, and we'll see 
uh, with the interview very soon. Yes, because we have an interview and you again jumped the gun without asking me. Yes. And this is why you are such a good partner to me, because you never listen to me. Yes, and I always <laughs> know what you were going to say. <laughs> so yeah, we are, uh, we are coming back with an interview in a couple minutes. And uh, also, a very good thing, we went into timeout. So it's uh, very probably that the rest of the round already concluded, so maybe we don't have any wait time at all before round four happens. <laughs> 